So here we are in a 30 foot yurt in the bathroom that's under construction. You can see kind of an interesting scenario. Insulation everywhere, ceiling. This is the exterior wall of the yurt. Behind this is lattice. Uh, the owner is gonna is doing this in a specific situation so that he can run a small electric wall heater and keep the bathroom heated at all times during the winter to keep his plumbing system simple so he doesn't have to train it. But we want to talk about how do you do these things? How do you have plumbing? How do you have water? How do you have a toilet, a shower? Easy. Same thing as it would be in any typical construction scenario. This is what we call a common plumbing wall. On the other side of this wall is your kitchen. And the reason to do this, whether you're in a house or in a yard, it just makes sense. Keeps everything consolidated, one place. Uh, you've got water lines stubbed out on one side for the kitchen sink. You've got water lines stubbed out here for your bathroom vanity. You've got a toilet. Here's the flange right here. It's gonna go in just like a normal toilet in a house. A shower, a full corner shower stall here. No reason you couldn't have a tub. It's just all about your design at that point. Um, this big pipe right here is your vent pipe. When you're going into a sewer system or a septic system, you gotta meet plumbing codes. You gotta make sure that uh, the system is vented so it drains properly. Now this is gonna exit out the wall, the exterior wall of the yurt. Sometimes we go up through the ceiling. We have roof jacks we can provide if you wanna go through the ceiling, no problem. Uh, most yurt bathrooms are gonna have a ceiling in them, uh, floor joists of a loft perhaps, or just a flat ceiling that's going across. No reason. You cannot and sh you should put in an exhaust fan that again can be vented outside the yurt. Um, owner's covering up the uh, walls, nailing to his snow and wind legs, which are right here with this paneling. That's just a unique look that he chose to do in this yurt. Doesn't have to be that way in a bathroom. Uh, here is your on-demand hot water heater. You're gonna make as much hot water as you could possibly want. It's gonna vent right through the wall with one of our custom flashing kits. You got a modern bathroom. No reason you can't do this in a yurt. It's really just that easy. So we've seen how all these systems are gonna to tie together in this bathroom to make it a fully functional bathroom, toilet, vanity, shower, hot and cold running water. We've seen how we've ran vents and plumbing lines and everything inside. Now we're gonna kick it outside to Vince and he's gonna take you underneath the platform to show you how everything is tied together where you can't see it, but it really matters. So here we are underneath the yurt and we're gonna look at some of the plumbing details here. This is a great yurt, it's got a super simple setup. It's got all the drain pipes coming down in one area. They're going to frame down from the bottom of the deck to the ground the whole way around the plumbing drains and the incoming water. They're going to insulate that with foam. This particular yurt is on the grid. That means it has electricity available to it. And since they have power available, there also is a backup system to keep this from freezing. They're going to wrap a product called heat tape around the incoming water supply. And then when it gets too cold, the heat tape will turn on and it'll keep the incoming water from freezing. There's a lot of yurts that are off the grid as well. In that instance, what we recommend is to be able to drain your plumbing totally so that you don't have to leave the yurt heated. Now, if you're in there year-round in the winter, you don't have to worry about this kind of thing. You can just use it like a, it's normal plumbing. There's really nothing different than that than living in a house.